did his pow wow. <laughs> The Pow Wow with Mo Podcast. What's up? Welcome to episode four of the Pow Wow with Mo Podcast. I'm Mo. I'm Pow Wow. All right. So, a little uh, housekeeping, I guess. We upload the podcast this week. That we did. We got a little under 20 listens per episode. So not bad. Not great. But hopefully, people listening that like it will share, like, also, go to iTunes and write a review. Apparently, that gets us higher up the list. Um, if you think we're awesome, if you think we suck, don't write a review. We don't need it. <laughs> or just email us and tell us how bad we are. Yeah, and also, our email is thepowwowwithmo at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-P-O-W-W-O-W-W-I-T-H-M-O at gmail.com. So we're going to get right into our first email we received from a listener, which is from Alan. And me and Pow Wow actually know this Alan. Yeah, but uh, his question here was, who is our worst bosses? So who's the worst boss you have ever had, Pow Wow? I'd probably have to say, I don't even remember her name, but when I worked at Sonic the first time, uh, she was... Uh, this was in high school? In high school, yeah. Okay. Uh, she was a little bit younger, probably in her uh, mid-20s. Um, she was always very rude to begin with. However, one day, most of us were standing around late at night, like most people do at fast food restaurants, and she decided to pick me out and have me clean the back of the uh, fridge along with the back of the fryers. Uh, She went out and then came back. I don't know what she did. And when she came back, I wasn't finished, and so I continued to get berated by her, um, which led to me going to my car. Um, very childlike, but calling my grandmother saying, Hey, Nana, I would like to quit this job. Um, I'll find one, you know, later on. This was in the fall, sometime around October. Right. I said I'd have one by the end of the year. Uh, and she told me to do whatever you want. And so that was one of my fun walkout moments. I walked in, took my shirt off, said, Here you go, and then just left. Probably the worst boss ever. Yeah, my, my worst boss was also in high school. Uh, I worked at a grocery store in this super small town. Um, so grocery store managers, I guess, are God in these situations. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my word deal was I just stocked and cleaned stuff. Uh, but there was this one old racist lady, and I feel comfortable calling her a racist. Uh, not a lot of black people lived in Warica, Oklahoma, but all the ones that did, I knew. So a friend of mine walked in, was just going through the aisles, and this woman told me I had to follow them around because they were black and black people stole stuff. <laughs> oh my God. So I knew I knew this guy, so I refused and I called her a racist. And I said, you can't Absolutely. do that. Um, I, I worked after school, right? I didn't work full time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the next day I come in, the boss wants to talk to me. And apparently this woman told all these lies of things I had done uh, Cal, I was only reading National Enquirer and not working, which is totally something an 18-year-old kid does. Or exactly. seven, actually, I was 17 at the time. Is just read National Enquirer magazines. So I kind of told him what happened. He didn't believe me, so I just kind of quit on the spot. So I just think the fact he defended a racist woman makes him the worst boss I've had. And maybe also racist? <laughs> yeah, probably racist as well. All right. Um, so again... If you can like, subscribe, let people know about us, uh, send us emails. We'd love to get emails and answer them. That'd be great. So what are some current events we have going on, Pow Wow? So was the Somalia truck bombing? Uh, yeah, I've completely missed that. I've seen some headlines. There's like 200 and some people dead. Yeah, 230 and- dead from a truck bomb. They were following uh, the vehicle uh, whenever it, it did uh, blow up. Um, right now... It, It's confirmed at least 237 people have been killed. Uh, There was buildings just leveled. Uh, It it looks like a war zone where it went at. It's beyond horrific, uh, to say the least. And I just saw Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, so that's destroyed my fantasy football uh, season for me. Slightly (laughs) happy, though, because he's obviously in uh, the NFC North with the Lions, and they got manhandled today by the Saints. Uh, so it, it's bittersweet, I guess. I mean, I know you've got him on your fantasy league, but I'm slightly happy that right. he's not there to, um, again, run the table. Also, uh, from Game of Thrones, the actor who plays Jamie Nicolaj, 
whatever. Nikolai, I think what it yeah, is. Yeah, some crazy name that I don't know how to pronounce. Uh, I saw where he gave an interview this week, and he said that they are not passing out scripts for Game of Thrones Season 8. Really? They're all going to be fed lines through earpieces. Now, he could have been lying, which I hope, because I just don't think Peter Dinklage is going to do great when a line's fed to him just then, and then he has to act it. I don't think anyone will, but he's like a great actor. Yeah. And I assume getting to see a script and and memorizing it and getting in the feel of it would be better than being fed lines through earpieces. For sure. I mean, and you're going to have to do some definitely improv because I know he does it sometimes, but doing it right on the spot the first time you ever see the right. line well, might be kind of difficult. And it's because they're all scared of people leaking stuff and you know people getting to know like they're going to film apparently many different endings so that if something does leak <laughs> they can choose another one they can choose a different <laughs> ending um it's smart though it is but it also kind of makes the ending seem like what's it what's the matter what's it matter if yeah. there could be all these different ones exactly but we'll see uh, i mean we have a long time for that but i thought you would find that interesting yeah i also see that in iran um this is not something that is new uh it's just another story came out about it um they sell kidneys there uh, and, and other organs as well. Now, they do have a... Like lamb kidneys? Like, no, human kidneys. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and this is so that people that are um, broke or need to have some money, they said this is a legal way that they can do it instead of doing things such as drug or prostitution, whatever have you. Um, but they do have a fixed price of $4,600 um, for each organ. Uh, which if apparently I think my can, organ's worth more? <laughs> I, nice that's organ. all you get. Now, <laughs> they they do have some problems because it takes about a year for this process to go through. So they have some problems with uh, rich people trying to bypass a system and pay somebody a couple of thousand dollars more to be able to get this operation done off the books. But to me, if $4,600 gets you completely out of debt and you're scot-free, that's pretty awesome if it's just $4,600 first off. Right, I must say, I've just student loans that are way more than that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But they have done over 30,000 kidney transplants since 1993. Um, so it does work. However, uh, there is just a lot of doctors that say that this is walking a, a fine line. Right. right. And the only really other thing I had uh, that caught my eye this week that I can think of is that Donald Trump said he met the president of the Virgin Islands. <laughs> uh in case you're unaware, Donald Trump is the president of the Virgin Islands, so that's Apparently why... Apparently he is not aware. <laughs> right, so <laughs> I just think that's funny. Like, I haven't watched SNL from last night. I've seen a few skits here and there, but I am mm -hmm. su wouldn't be surprised if they do a him in the mirror, like, hey, would, president of Virgin <laughs> Islands. <laughs> they should. They would kill it. Uh, the last thing that I have to bring up is uh, about obesity, actually. Uh a new study came out that 10 uh, times more children and teens are obese than they were 40 years ago. Um, currently, 124 million, at least in 2016, uh, children and adolescents were considered obese. Uh, that's more than the 11 million uh, that was classified as obese in 1975. Uh, I know we have a 20% uh, obesity rate. Uh, in the entire United States, and that's just, it's pretty terrible. I'm here in another 40 years, hopefully that doesn't double again to 40%. Well, and there's probably like a million different reasons, but apparently when they started promoting low-fat foods, so whenever that was, and they'd be like, you want low-fat? Like, actually, you don't. Having fat in foods flavors it, and they don't have to add all the sugar and salt to everything. So anytime you see something that says low-fat, they just pump them a lot more sugar to make up for it so it tastes <laughs> so it good makes it worse and so it just makes it worse um i'm guessing that's probably a, a major contribution there i really want to watch those documentaries on netflix that mm -hmm. apparently you watch them and you'll never want to eat sugar again but like i love everything with sugar for sure so i'm not Especially trying to sweet tea yeah i'm not trying to ruin my life yet but i'm it might happen we'll yeah see. i can hear you all right so uh moving on um have you did you hear anything from uh our friend lv Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he's been trying to route me on Saturdays. Um, I'll let you, I mean, I just read it today, and I've already forgot a lot of it because, <laughs> like, the first two paragraphs, well, first, I'm unemployed, so he's trying to make me somewhat feel better, but it's like in this, it's like he's trying to imagine what someone in a movie would say to their friend. <laughs> he's trying so, to set up a, right. a plot here. And so it'll be like, I know you feel like a loser because you can't provide for your wife, and I'm like, well, hey, thanks for bringing that thanks one up. Thanks for pointing it out, yeah. And then 
he'll go on to be like, you have to understand you want to take a job for the machine, but you're just unhappy? Or do you have an entrepreneurial spirit where you just want to succeed and thrive in life? And I'm like, well, anything at this moment would be great. <laughs> um, so it's like two paragraphs of him trying to use words that he d- doesn't know how to spell or even really know what they mean. But because he's used to being smart, he's trying to still sound smart. But he even admits in there that I know I sound really dumb. So he's trying to overcompensate at this point. Right. Uh, his baby mama mama or cellmate's baby's mama mama thing, he said he clarified in this letter he doesn't love her, but he does really like her. And it gives him a connection to the outside world besides me. And so he enjoys that whole thing. I mean, I guess whatever he needs to do because, I mean, he's not getting out for... It'll be a while, yeah. Yeah, for a Um, very long time. And then, trying to think of anything else he may have mentioned. Oh, he almost got in a fight because something about the OU Texas game was on, and him and some guy almost got in a fight over it, but it ended up getting squashed before it got out of hand. Uh, But he said he's going to try to rob me another one today, so we'll see if we get any other words on that. All right. All right, so uh, every week we're trying to do a top five list. Um, if y'all have any ideas for top five lists that you think will be entertaining, uh, eventually we're going to have to get to like top five Pauly Shore movies, and there's only five Pauly Shore <laughs> movies, so uh, hopefully that's come too soon. Um, but this week we just had top five movies. So I know for me personally, I put TV way above movies as far as what's mm-hmm. better these days, especially as a kid. Yeah, movies were probably better, sure. um, but we're just in the golden age of television for the last 10 years or so. Um, so originally my list was all comedies, every one of them. <laughs> and then I realized that, well, I'm going to try to sprinkle in at least one movie that's not. Um, and then we'll, of course, have some honorable mentions after we give our top five list. Um, so what do you have as your number five movie? So my number five I actually just changed uh, whenever we stepped outside a little bit ago. My number five has got to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Use. It's number two? Number two. Yeah, number two is the best. One of the rare moments a sequel is better than the original. For sure. Um, I just don't know how many times I've watched that movie. Oh, yeah. (laughs) At least in the hundreds in the amount of times. Um, I remember I had it on VHS. Um, Now I have it just downloaded. Um, But TMNT, Secret of the Use, has got to be my number five. Yeah, I mean, it was just fun. I mean, as a kid, um, I love the cartoon. So someday when we do the top five favorite cartoons, childhood show is like mm-hmm. that cartoon is going to be in mind. I own all the action figures, um, love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I think that's probably the best movie for sure. Out of, um, out of all three of them, I think, well, I'm not including any of these new ones. Um, stupid alien looking cause they're, they're, they're worthless to me. Um, but I mean, you got vanilla ice in it. Go Ninja go. I mean, go, yeah. go Ninja, go Ninja go. Um, but again, that's that's my top five, and I I had to change it because it's got to be in there. All right, and my number five, I believe you have on your list somewhere else. So, if so just let me know, and we'll wait and talk about it. But I have Grandma's Boy. I do have it on my list. All right. So, what's your number four? So, number four, I don't know if you have on your list or not, but it's Friday. I do not thought about it. So, I mean, I think growing up, at least uh, most of us boys and ch- teenage boys at that time had to have watched Friday. I would say those of us that weren't country, given like where we're at in Oklahoma. For I mean, sure. I know plenty of people that probably have never seen it. Um, but yeah, Friday was a big deal. I personally think the second one's better than the first one as well. Next Friday, agreed. I uh, mean... But the first one is what it is. I mean, I, mean, it, it, I just... I have to well, I have to put down Friday over next Friday because of the pure amount of times that I've watched it. Right. But I, I do agree. I think next Friday... Um, bringing in Mike Epps. Chico and Mike Epps, it just it, it made it great. Um, what was what was the little white guy's name who worked with them? Roach. Roach. That was it. Um, but I, I just love Friday Debo. I mean, well, I mean the fact that Debo is a, like pop cultural reference, like it's just a verb. Like you Deboed him. Exactly. I mean it clearly has made a mark on everyone for sure just off that i um, mean i just think i mean there's a lot of things i say probably from that movie on a weekly basis and i don't even realize that i'm saying it but like anytime we meet someone named craig me and you'll be like craig <laughs> so i definitely made a mark what's on your mind craig so what do you have as your number four mo uh my number four this is the only uh comedy on my list which is blow 
great movie. So I don't know. I, I like anything that's like uh, going to tell someone's whole life story or whatever. Mm -hmm. Johnny Depp's. I mean, everyone likes Johnny Depp. He's a good sure. actor. Um, I think it was because I really just got into it when I kind of started smoking weed and, and knowing about drug culture. Yeah. Uh, there was just something about it that was like, oh, hell yeah, I get Very down with appealing. this. Very appealing. Right. And then you got um, Pee Wee Herman guy who's, you know, the <laughs> measure. And like, he's really funny in it, in his small appearance. Uh, I think when his George Young, who's the main character, when his mom calls the cops on him, you're like, what a bitch. And then anything you see her in after that, you're like, I fucking hate her. <laughs> because... Oh, there's just and Ray Liotta's in it. I mean, there's just a really good cast. Uh, I probably watch it too much. Where if it's on now, I'm like, I've seen it too much. I don't need to see Can't it. Can't watch it anymore. I understand. But I definitely. I mean, like I've watched that DVD so many times. Scratch, you've watched it so much, right? It, <laughs> and I don't. I'm not even like a cocaine fan or anything. So it's not nothing about that. It's just uh, the American dream, right? Like he found his loopholes, flew a plane. Did all that. I'm sure they're going to remake it someday. For sure. Um, but I loved Blow in high school to college. Like in that time period, I just I watched the fuck out of Blow. Awesome. All right. So for my number three is what you had um, for your four, I believe. My five. Your five, sorry. Um, with Grandma's Boy. Yeah. Um, I would say it's the best Happy Madison movie, which is Adam Sandler's yeah, company. Yeah. And Adam Sandler's not even in it. Uh, it's about video games. Which we like. <laughs> yes. Uh, they smoke pot, which, again, college was kind of our thing. That's all it was. Uh, it's stupid in a lot of ways, like Dante with his monkey and all that uh, stuff. Uh, but there's – and that's, like, so quotable for me. Um, for sure. Or or just uh, whenever – Fat Jonah Hill's in it. I'll say when Jonah Hill sucks on the titty for 13 hours and that's some huge accomplishment in a right. movie <laughs> like that. And then and to me – Or he makes a whole video game off an Xbox. Somehow. Yes. Just makes um, it. Just makes some awesome video game. Doesn't need a computer. Um, anyway, but I think JP steals that movie. Oh, yeah, with his robot legs. Yes, I just... Yeah. He kills the robot noises. Yeah, he's and the it, best. Or, and they just awesome. make fun of him for dressing like the Matrix. Like, there's so many things in that movie that I love. Yeah. Um, I remember reading that Betty White was offered the role as the grandma, and she turned it down because there was drugs in it. And made me dislike Betty White just a, <laughs> a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, but yeah, I I love Grandma's. Boy. I mean, it, I don't know if it's the most watched movie, but it may be the most watched movie. I mean, at least in the last fifteen years. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many times I <laughs> I've watched that movie just start from beginning to end because to me, I'm not a huge scary movie person. I do not like scary movies. Right. So if there was ever if. I, Every time I happen to glimpse even a scary movie on TV, I'm turning on Grandma's Boy because I just – it was so funny. And right. then um, what was that uh, chick that she played off Scooby-Doo that was in that movie? Uh, the main hot lady who comes from corporate. Yeah. I know. Um, she just cracked me up in that well, And film. Kevin Nealon's their boss. Which yes. Is David Spade's whole cameo is super funny when they're like, all right, God blue. <laughs> it's Shiloh. Uh, it's so great. It's yeah. a great movie. Love it. Um, my number three is Thank You for Smoking. Okay. I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you've watched it with me. I have. Um, I can't remember that. Is Aaron Eckerd maybe is the name of the main character. I don't really know if it's a comedy. I mean, it, it is a satire of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it would probably classify as a comedy. But I remember just watching it. Uh, so back when we had a Hastings and Hastings was like a store in business. Mm -hmm. um, my first year of college... I didn't really have many friends, so I would just go to Hastings and I'd buy two movies, get one free. And so every week, that's what I would do. And then that one week, I bought that movie and was like, I fucking love this movie. <laughs> um, it's kind of all about bullshitting. Like, he's teaching his son how to bullshit. Like, one yeah. of the big things is, like, he asks his son, what's your favorite ice cream, chocolate or vanilla? And then he has to pick a side to argue. And then his counter to that is, like... I don't think you should have to choose. I think you should have the choice to choose whatever ice cream's the best. Like, there was just something about it uh, that I really enjoyed that movie. Like, I liked whatever the point was. Um, it was funny enough to me in a weird way. Um, so I, I had to put a number three. I feel like car salesmen watched that movie. Yeah, to be totally. able to get better. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So my number two um, has got to be Euro Trip. Oh, you watch the fuck out of that movie. Nonstop. <laughs> I had the movie that had uh, both Road Trip and Euro Trip that you could choose from. Right. 
And I don't know how many times I've watched Euro Trip. Well, and I would all say like 98% of people will say Road Trip's better. For sure. And I would even probably say it might be a better made movie, it, right, in some yeah. ways. But I do think Euro Trip's funnier. It cracks me up, especially when they get on the English bus. And there's that guy who tells him, like, hold on, it goes, uh, so I tell a swamp donkey, a sake, before I give him a tonkin in the tradesman's entrance and have him lick me bloody y'all balls. <laughs> right. You say that all the time and no one has a clue what it means. Nobody. Uh, I think it has the whole, like, brother sister make out, which, you know, beat the whole, like, this porn epidemic by, For like, sure. 10 years. Um, there's just lots of funny people. The main character, the, the main best friend, he was like unjustified or some uh, some random yeah. show, and I'm like, who the fuck is that? And you're like, oh, it's a dude from Euro Trip for sure. And I I just love that there's a uh, that cameo at the beginning with Matt Damon. Yeah, um, Scotty doesn't Scotty know. doesn't know, and it, it's it's prevalent throughout the entire that film. Movie. Love or that song. That song is so funny. Even when they're in Europe, that song Scotty doesn't know is played in a techno beat, and it's right. it's so great. Well, then there's they go to East Germany, and that little kids walking around like Hitler, which is like <laughs> there's a dog holding a hand in its mouth. Yeah, uh, yeah. everything about the music. And I think that was the first time I ever saw Fred Armisen. I don't know if that's where he got to start. Um, he was the guy from SNL, you yeah. know, and he's on the butt. The Muscoozy, Muscoozy. Yes, it, it got so weird with that. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I knew Euro Trip would be up there for you. And yeah. my my number two may be your number one. May, no, no, it's not, because I know what your number one is uh, without even you saying it. But my number two is super bad. I, I knew you would have it, which is why I didn't put it on my list. But I agree with you. I mean... It made me hate Transformers. Yeah. That's so we had a friend uh, in our fraternity named JT who was this big nerd that loved Transformers and had all these action figures before the movie ever came out. Yeah. Was all excited about it. And then that year on the MTV Movie Awards, Superbad and Transformers went against each other. And I said, for whatever reason, if Transformers beat Superbad, I'm punching JT in the balls <laughs> the next time I that. see him. I do remember And this isn't something I would normally do. But for whatever reason, because I was in a fraternity at the time, I just turned into a douchebag that day. <laughs> and I saw him at Applebee's like the next day, and I just punched him in the balls in the middle of Applebee's. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> and that, it. It was funny at the time, and I feel bad now, but for sure, that's how much I love Super Bad. I mean, I love enough that I went and saw the first showing here in Ada. Mm -hmm. um, that was back when our theater still had film not yeah. digital and halfway through the movie it turned upside down and played from the end backwards and so they had to shut it down give us all our money back and then i went the next day and had to watch it after they had fixed the film yep. and it was still super funny even with me having to do all that it was awesome i think the main thing at least for you that sticks out with it for me is one day you were like fucking judah <laughs> And yes. I like looked at you and I was like, you know the line's fucking Judas, right? <laughs> yes. Like as in Judas from the Bible because he's a oh, traitor. Man. And then so I think I downloaded it or we rented it, whatever we did. And we watched it. And then I just went through and was like, we're going to get all these jokes out to make sure you understand them. And then after that, we watched it all the time. When we first moved in together, I remember I hadn't been smoking weed. Mm -hmm. For a minute, we found I had a little Christmas tree box and we found weed in it. Yes. It was like six months old or something. And then we smoked it our first day moving into this place. And then Super Bad was the only DVD we had. <laughs> so we and we didn't have cable yes. yet. Uh, and we watched it like eight times and just cracked up every time. Uh, it was also, I think, because we were so new to college when it came out that we were still close enough to the high school that we like that we understood sure. it or appreciate it more. And it's really just a story of friendship. Yeah. More than anything. I mean, of these two people, I mean, there's, it's super funny. Like the period blood, the, you know, <laughs> them at that party, awesome. like there's so many good moments, but at the end of the day, it's just these two guys being friends. Uh, and I just, I love super bad. It it's is. So and good. I mean, I like that they had Seth Rogen and Bill Hader in it. Um, well, as and, the uh, cops, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, they wrote it. That's why mm -hmm. the characters' names are Seth and Evan. Okay. It's so, like they're in high school. They started writing. I think they're 14. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so accurate, I guess, to like high school life. Um, I don't know. Just love everything about Superbad. There's not a bad thing I can say. McLovin was like a phenomenon. Like For sure. Everyone talked about it. You know, uh, he had T-shirts that you had, came out. You had out. a poster in your apartment with right. McLovin on it. Yeah, Superbad's awesome. All right. I know what your number one is, but let the listeners know. So my number one is Independence Day. Fucking Independence Day. 
I I mean, Will Smith is my man crush for sure. Right. Um, but Independence Day, I watched that my uh, grandma Helena's house. Um, that and uh, honorable mention of Anaconda. Um, but Independence Day, I, I watched it so much that I can still sit down and watch it and then just say word for word throughout the entire film. Um, it was just that first alien movie that I watched that gave me this, maybe there are aliens out there. Um, hopefully they don't come and attack us like they did because otherwise we would get destroyed because there's no way we're getting one person to kamikaze uh, then figure out that's how we take them all down. But I I love Independence Day through and through. I will say uh, a couple of questions or statements. One, there is one connection between my number one and your number one, which is Randy Quaid's in both of them. Okay. Uh, and did you like the new Independence Day? I never saw it. No. I went and watched it purely because I loved the Independence Day originally. Um, I did like how they brought the mom back um, from Independence Day, um, Will Smith's wife in it, however, or was it by the end of it. Um, however, she dies really fast, and I just – it was very easy for them to win at the end when there was no chance that they should have. And I feel like now with the storyline well, – just because humans are so smart. You know, we can't fly <laughs> across the universe, but we're always smart enough to beat the aliens that could. All we could do is create a moon base and then just get destroyed with everything we have that we've been building for 20-plus years. Right. I just was not a huge fan of this Independence Day <clears throat> resurrection or whatever it was called. Resurgence? Maybe? Resurgence, I think you're right. Um, yeah, I mean, Independence Day was cool when it came out. It just never st stuck with me of being like, fucking love that movie. Maybe if I would have owned it or something and watched it more, but I watched it and was like, cool, Will Smith's cool. Yeah, I'm done I like it. Fresh Prince. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of my small take. I hear you. So what's your number one? All right, my number one, uh, I've ne again, never hear anyone mention this, but I love this movie. I bought it whenever a video rental store was going out of business um, in my hometown, and Got it for like 50 cents, just happened to get this movie, took it home and watched it, and it became my favorite movie, which is Kingpin. I remember you religiously walking, watching Kingpin. Yeah, so if you don't know about Kingpin, uh, it's got Woody Harrelson yes. and Randy Quaid. And Woody Harrelson's this, uh, like in the 70s, he was this real famous bowler, but like at the beginning of his career, he screws over the mob or something to that extent or out of a bet, and they put his hand in the little ball retrieval and it destroys his hand yep and then that was his bowling hand so then whenever you pick up with him he has a hook and he wears this rubber hand and the big main joke throughout the whole thing is on his rubber hand he shows his like state bowling championship ring <laughs> and he'll show him be like like you you a good bowler and he shows him and he's like what is that saying he goes that made a rubber and he's like the ring not the hand or like i don't know yeah. for whatever reason that cracked me up as a kid and uh he meets randy quaid who's this amish kid even though randy quaid's super old in real life at this time. Yeah. Uh, meets him through some miscommunication. He thinks this, that Randy Quaid's a really good bowler. And then he decides to mentor him and take him on the road to earn money bowling. Mm -hmm. And then the chick from weird science and is also Vanessa angel that I don't even know what her real name is, to be honest. Um, she's there and she's all hot in the movie or whatever. And then they go across the country, and they're going to try to win this million-dollar prize in Reno. Mm -hmm. Bill Murray's in it. He's the main bad guy with the horrible toupee. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's so fucking funny. Like, I'll watch that movie at any time. I mean, I have it on DVD and VHS, and I'm like, we could totally watch Kingpin at this exact moment. I'll be totally fine with that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I love that movie so much. I think it's just the Amish stuff's real funny. Like, everyone does this joke now, but... Uh, Woody Harrelson's like pretends to be Amish to get the Amish family to let Randy Quaid go with him. And he goes, and he's like, Oh, I milked your cows. And I'm like, and he's drinking this big bucket of milk. And he's like, we don't have any cows. We have a bull. Right. And like, <laughs> and that's been done so many times since then, but it maybe even before, but like at yeah. the time I was like, Oh my God, this movie's so awesome. funny. Yeah. Uh, I just really enjoy Kingpin and I'll, I'll always mention it when I, anyone asks me what my favorite movie is. Yeah, I, I can see that. So just to recap, um, my top five, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Secret of the Ooze, Friday, Grandma's Boy at three, Euro Trip at two, and then number one being Independence Day. And I had Grandma's Boy five, Blow four, Thank You for Smoking three, Super Bad number two, and Kingpin number one. Awesome. All right, and then some things that I had on a list of I was trying to figure it out. Uh, white men can't jump. Oh. I, I just love that movie. Yeah. Uh, 
I just haven't seen it enough times for it to really make my top five. I understand. Uh, Fight Club. I loved when I first saw Fight Club, but yeah. it's super cliched, right, to like it. Um, Almost Famous is one of those movies. If it's on, I will watch it till the end of that movie. Yeah. Uh, Into the Wild. I know it's based on a book, but I really like that movie as well. Straight Out of Compton, which is a little newer. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I saw that trailer, like I got chills and was like, I have to see this movie because I'm a big NWA fan. Uh, Pineapple Express. I've got that on honorable mention for sure. Uh, I remember going and seeing in the theaters, um, hated it when I first saw it. And then I went two days later and saw it again, super stoned <laughs> and loved it. And it was awesome. And I've right? loved it yeah. ever since. Uh, I think Bill Hader's opening is up there with Super Troopers for the best opening sequence sure. of a comedy movie where it's like, burm, 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 burm. Uh, what is it? Oh, Eight Mile. I mean, I think Eight Mile is legitimately a good movie. Yeah. Plus, the rapping is fun. Uh, the Big Sick, which is the mo- the newest show on my little honorable mentions list. I thought that was really good. Truman Show with Jim Carrey, I loved. Um, Internal Sunshine, The Spotless Mind with Jim Carrey, I really liked. Yep. Uh, Anchorman, because I was trying to think of all... Every Will Ferrell movie is good, in my opinion. I know a lot of people get annoyed with it. Anchorman's great, and in any of the others. You want to say Talladega Nights, uh, Semi-Pro, I love all of those comedy movies. Right. Um, I think Kicking and Screaming is honestly my favorite Will Ferrell movie. Really? I know it's like, I don't even like PG movies. Yeah. But he's just really funny when they have him a little more toned down. Like he's like all cursing and stuff. Like he had a, he has to rely on a little more, right? That yeah. movie. Uh, and then Borat, because Borat was ridiculous when it first came out. It was. Uh, and then I really liked Creed. Creed? Uh, you know, the mm-hmm. Rocky ish movie. And then Chronicle, which was that found footage superhero film where like kids get superpowers and it's all like handy cam footage. Okay. Um, and then Get Out, which I watched recently. Yep. It's like psychedelic horror mm-hmm. movie. So anyway, what else you got? So my honorable mentions, I've got Dazed and Confused. Uh, Should have been on mine. I love Dazed and Confused. Yeah. Um, I, I had Pineapple Express as well, but you had brought it up Super Troopers. Yeah. Um, I just, th- that opening scene, it, it is awesome. Um, littering and, littering and. Littering and smoking, smoking the, the reefer. reefer. <laughs> you boys I, like Mexico? Yeah, I love everything about berries it. Berries taste like schnozberries. I just, uh, that movie is awesome. Um, and then Sex Drive. Oh, yeah. Sex Drive was awesome when it came out. Um, what was it called? Uh, uh, was it a Blumpkin? Is that what he got? Or was it a tractor? Which one? Or that, or that country girl in the trailer park shits on his chest. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um that was that was funny and then uh the big lebowski oh yeah kubi loves the big lebowski yes and then uh anaconda and then what i had at number five which is lord of the rings the two towers yeah uh i remember seeing all the lord of the rings opening nights Mm -hmm. or at least within the first week of them coming out and then at the time really liking them i always try to rewatch them but they were so fucking long i could just never do it yeah uh and then after, I guess, reading Game of Thrones, watching Game of Thrones, when I go back and try to watch Lord of the Rings, I'm like, mm. it's so childish. <laughs> yeah. All this good versus evil. There's no gray area. <laughs> right? like, that's just my... For sure. I hear you. About it. Um, and then the way we're talking about movies real quick, I've been watching some TV shows lately. This weekend didn't do a whole lot. Any new ones? Yeah, I watched some new ones. So I guess... Uh, I told you guys a couple weeks ago, but Atypical on Netflix about a kid with autism trying to get a girlfriend, more or less. Yeah. And it's got uh, Michael Rappaport as the dad, and that was our main reason I watched it at first. Um, that movie's really good, or show's good. And then this weekend, I watched The Good Doctor that has the kid off Bates Motel. Okay. Get you in your feels for sure, because yeah. everyone's okay. mean to him, because he's like autistic. Because he's the autistic, autistic doctor, right? Right, he's autistic, um, but he knows all kinds of stuff. And they do some flashbacks uh, of him as a kid where everyone's mean as fuck to him. I mean, even the doctors in modern day are mean as fuck to him. So even though he got a job and he's saving people's lives, they're like, you're not one of us. And it really makes you feel bad for this fictional character. Um, I'll probably stick it out and just watch all the episodes. I'm already gotcha. invested in the first few episodes. Um, but I thought that one was really good. And then I'm sure there's more. I know there's actually more shows I've watched this weekend, but that was the main one that stuck out to me of like, oh, it's pretty fucking good. So, All right, well, we're going to take a break, um, and we'll be right back with you to talk about the what our predictions are for the NBA playoffs. All right. 
right, and we are back with the podcast of the Pow Wow with Mo. Uh, we are going to go over our predictions uh, for the NBA playoffs for both Western Conference and East Conference. Uh, I believe we're going to start with the Western Conference. Yes. All right, so. Uh, I say we go one through eight. One through eight? Yeah. Okay. So who do you have as your first overall? In the West, uh, I think it's no surprise that it is the Warriors. Agreed. I'm same spot with you. I mean, if like three other four superstars got injured, that'd be cool. But I don't see it happening. So I think Warriors will be the number one, probably have the best record in the league. Yeah, I mean, they've averaged over 70 wins over the last three seasons. Right. Um, it, it's hard to not keep them away. And they were one win away from having uh, three P. Right. And I think uh, there's a good chance they have a they beat their record from two years ago. Because now that Kevin Durant will probably be in rhythm with them, mm -hmm. they may be even better this year than they've ever been. They may be because he missed, uh, what, 20 something games last year? Well, that and it was just he was new to the team. So it took a while for him to gel as well. Agreed. All right. So uh, I think we, I think most of ours are pretty similar in the West. So who do we got number two? So number two, I've got the Houston Rockets. I do as well. I would love to say it's the Thunder. I just, but. The Rockets are just the type of team that they're going to be putting up offensive numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think losing Pat Beverly and a few of those other guys are going to hurt them. So Agreed. it would not surprise me if they're three or four. But I just think if I have to predict right now, they're going to have the second best. For right. sure. I mean, really, it's all going to depend on uh, the the teammates of James Harden and Chris Paul. If those two don't mash well together, they are not going to be in the well, top. Three. I think that's being a little overblown. It may be. James Harden's been a shooting guard every year of his career except last year. And even last year, he kind of was still a shooting guard. Because when he was a shooting guard and Pat Beverly was the point guard, mm -hmm. he still played like he played point guard last year. So I just think that's just a storyline people want to make. Like they're going to sure. clash. I mean, Chris Paul's going to clash with every teammate he ever has because mm -hmm. he that's just the way he is. Um, but I think they're going to be good. I mean, I don't think there's too much question about it. For sure. So, number three, I do have the Oklahoma City Thunder. I do, too. And now, I think it's a little bit of hope. Agreed. A little bit, right, that they'll be three or two. I mean, I think the two, three, and four could all be in any order on two, three, and four that For we sure. have. Uh, I just really hope the Thunder work out. Uh, again, I said last week, Robertson drives me nuts. I think he's going <laughs> to drive me nuts again this year. Um, but... I'm just hoping that they figure it out. Now, there might be some growing pains at the beginning or end of the season. I can see at the beginning everything's smooth, mm -hmm. and then at the end, Carmelo's like, why haven't I got my looks? Give me the ball 40 times a game, let me shoot. Or I think it can go the other way. At the beginning of the year, they're going to have some growing pains at the end. They'll figure it out. I think it'll be one of the two. I um, prefer the latter of those two, <laughs> if anything. Right. Uh, all right, so number four, and I, I feel stupid having the Spurs, number four. I do as well. Because I feel like you should just put them at two because they always have been. But Kawhi is going to miss a little bit at the beginning of the season. And you got Tony Parker out. Yeah, but I think that's probably – I think it'll help him because he wasn't – I mean, I know he's still good, but he wants the ball more and all this stuff where I think you have like – I think DeJounte Murray's their mm -hmm. starting point guard now. Uh, I mean, it's – Pop's the reason they're going to be a top four on everyone's predictions is because he will figure it out. For sure. I mean – I. As long as you've got Greg Popovich and Kawhi Leonard, I, I can't take you out of the top four. Right. Um, all right. Number five, I think this is where we kind of barely get off from each other. So who do you have number five? Number five, I have uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. All right. I have the Nuggets, uh, which I think I have the Timberwolves six. I think you have the I Nuggets have the six. six. Yep. Uh, the only reason I don't have the Timberwolves at five, and I understand they have them crazy talent and all that. They do is that their wins will have to jump up so much from last year. For sure. For them to become the fifth seed. Uh, I know Jimmy Butler's great. He is. I just don't know if he's going to turn gonna around that like one. that. So they don't have any like – I mean, he's a good shooter, and Wiggins is a good shooter, but there's some duplication there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, ah. And Thibodeau is like this defensive genius, but their defense last year sucked. For sure. I mean – in my opinion, you, they did add Jimmy Butler and Jeff Teague. Um, but See, I liked Rubio. I did. You like Ricky Rubio? So, I mean, and he was a pure assist person. Like, Jeff that Teague is also, I want the ball in my hand to shoot, point guard. Yep. So, we'll see how it works. I mean, they may have a system in place where it's just going to run perfectly. Uh, 
Carl Anthony Towns is great. I just think Andrew Wiggins has to step up, in my opinion, quite a bit for them to be able uh, to continue to have a great season. Yeah, I think maybe if he goes to more of a point forward sort of role, okay. like where he's more of a distributor, mm-hmm. might help the team overall, but that's not really who he is. Yeah. And also, he needs to get back that whole defensive mindset that he had in college, I think, to like really meet his full potential. Um and we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah. So that's where we just have our five and six swapped. Yeah, because I've um, got the Nuggets at six. And I think seven and eight, we have the same. So who do you have at seven? So number seven, I have got uh, the Portland Trailblazers. Oh, we do not. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I left the Trailblazers out of the playoffs. Uh, really? I did. Now, I like Damian Lillard. I like CJ McCollum. And mm-hmm. I love Nurkic. I do. I, from the end of the end of last year, he was good. But if you look at his history in the NBA, he does a lot of not trying, at least when he was on the Nuggets. <laughs> and so I just – it won't surprise me if they're there, but I'm not like – I definitely think they're one of the top eight teams. You know For I mean? sure. I mean, to me, I don't know. I mean, this is – like now I think, looking at it again, I – well, like, I think they'll win some tough games. Like, they play the Warriors well. I think they'll play because they have a good backcourt. I mean, having a good backcourt that doesn't defend shit, <laughs> I mean, they will put up points, but I think they'll also lose some easy games. For sure. I mean, sense. I just, I, first off, I've seen CJ McCollum's out the first game. Because um, he took eight steps off the bench. Because <laughs> he got off the bench during that yep. uh, little tussle there. But, I mean, to me, it really doesn't matter past four. Yeah, I mean, they're probably not. I mean, it, right. it's, it's not going to matter much, but I had to throw them there. Who do you have as your number seven? My number seven is the Clippers. That's who I have as eight. So, I love Blake Griffin, always have, probably because he went to OU and he's from Oklahoma, For sure. right? Um, it's still crazy to me, his skin color, if you look at his dad. And <laughs> and I, I get so mad because you want to include him. as Because everyone's like, we don't have any white American-born players. I'm like, Blake Griffin. They're Blake like, Griffin. actually. <laughs> but... Because he's half and half, he can't count as white. He has to count as black. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> For sure. Um, but I love Blake Griffin. I think without Chris Paul on the team, there is a chance their chemistry could be better. Now, I don't love Doc Rivers, so I think that is going to hold them back some. But they got that uh, Mio Telshavanovic or whatever. Yeah. Right? And they've got, got Danilio Gallinari. Right. I said that name right. Gallinari. I mean, they always needed a three, mm-hmm. and they finally got one in him. Now, I know he has an injury history, just like Blake he does. does. So we'll see what happens there. But I love Pat Beverly, and they got him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just think they're good enough to at least be the seven seed is where I'm looking. Now, again, won't surprise me if they don't make it. For sure. And someone else came in. To me, I think you could easily say that the Pelicans are right there in the mix um, at eight. Uh, it really, to me, it depends if Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins um, – if that tandem works out. Right. And I have the Pelicans at eight as well. And now that you mentioned the Trailblazers, maybe they should have been at eight on my list. But I just like Anthony Davis. And I've always liked Boogie or DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I want them to make the playoffs. I don't know if they really will, but that's why I put the Pelicans at number eight. Uh, All right. We'll see what happens. They don't really have a backcourt, and you need a backcourt in today's NBA. Mm-hmm. But then again, they have two centers. I'm going to call Anthony Davis a center. He is that can stretch the floor and that's super valuable, right? So I mean, sure. if I'm going to say that Jokic with, um, oh my God, the dude from the Hawks can't even think, Paul Millsap, Paul Millsap. I think if they're going to make the playoffs, I don't see why DeMarcus Cousins and uh, Anthony Davis can't make the playoffs. For sure. So uh, Warriors, Rockets, Thunder, Spurs, Nuggets, Timberwolves, Clippers, Pelicans. All right, yeah, and mine was Golden State, Houston, Thunder, Spurs, Timberwolves, uh, Clippers, Trailblazers, and then rounding out with the Nuggets, or like I said, it could easily uh, move over to the Pelicans. Gotcha. All right, so for the East, I already know we disagree on the first one, so who do you have the number one in the East? Number one, I've got the Cavs. And I have the Celtics, and I think this will be the biggest. I mean, we'll see what happens. There's a few reasons I chose the Celtics over the Cavs. I think the Cavs are the favorites. Uh, They are? The Cavs don't have very much passing. They They have LeBron. But if they're going to start Derrick Rose and Dwayne Wade in the backcourt, and they said they are, I just don't see how they're going to get the ball movements in the three-point shooting that you kind of need. Um, and they never – LeBron doesn't care about the one seed historically. No. So I also can see he's taken off 
a week in February to go hang out in Miami with Dwayne Wayne. And they're both <laughs> just going to take a week off. So I think the Celtics will want it more. I think Kyrie is going to have something to prove where he's like, no, I'm here and I'm leading this team. So that's my, honestly my main reason is I think I think Kyrie and the Celtics will want it more than LeBron and the Cavs, the one seed. Agreed. I mean, and I can see that. And to me, those two are interchangeable. Um, now, I do want to see the impact that Isaiah Thomas will have when he comes back in, I think, January is when he's looking to come back. Yeah, maybe. Um, that's, to me, I want to see how big of an impact that's going to be and how long it's going to take for him to get his legs underneath him. Right. I mean, because he has this whole, like, they didn't want me, blah, blah, blah. They just didn't want to pay him a max contract, and he's fucking wearing Brink sandals, acting like they're going to have to. <laughs> and this doesn't talk about enough, but, like, the Celtics did that. The reason the Kings traded to Marcus Cousins is because he was saying the same thing. They better pay me the super max mm -hmm. that I'll qualify for. I think we will see a lot of teams trading their superstars who aren't quite to the super max level yeah. in the NBA because they have that new rule. Like, we love you. We don't love you for... This, for this ridiculous, ridiculous like forty of percent yep. of the cap room stuff. So, um, so I'm guessing you have Celtics too. I have, I have Celtics Cavs, too. I have Cavs yep. too. We'll see what happens there. So, who do you have number three? So, number three, I have the Washington Wizards. I do too. Um, I, I, I love John Wall for sure. Um, John Wall, and if you have a healthy Bradley Beal, um, to me that that's going to be great. And then uh, I do think eventually Gortat will have to fall off. I mean, maybe last year was when he did fall off because he hasn't been amazing. But I feel like eventually that has to be a hindrance to them. But I just like Bradley Bill enough. For sure. And it's the fucking East. Yeah, I mean. So I think they'll be. <laughs> agree. I mean, they didn't three. add anything to their bench to really help them out. Right. Um, They do have, for what it's worth, Markeith Morris after about three weeks or two or three weeks after the season starts, we'll get him back. Right. Um, but, I mean, I again, honestly, and I know this is probably terrible to say, but after the first two, I. Yeah, I mean, there's. Not I a, think it's a toss. I think there's a dark horse after the first, the top, which I have ranked at number four. So who do you have number four? So number four, I have the Raptors. Oh, I have the Bucks. You have the Bucks. Okay, see, I have the Bucks at five. That's just all on me. I have the Raptors at five. Um, that's just all on me hoping Giannis becomes another step closer to what he has the potential to be. For sure. I mean, I, he is such a beast. I mean, you alluded to this earlier. He can play one through five. Yeah. It, it is insane. Um, how well he can play. Well, and I like the other pieces. I mean, last year they missed Jabari. Agreed. He went out. Mm -hmm. Chris Middleton was out a lot of the time. Yeah. So I think them two are great. I think Thon Makers, another year under his belt, might be better. Uh, I think – I'm pretty sure they moved to Greg Monroe's the sixth man. He's not starting, mm -hmm. which is probably better for him, um, for him and the team. Uh, Jason Kidd, for whatever reason, has been a great coach. Uh, he normally for sure. figures it um, out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, to me, I think you could interchange those later on in the year. I, again, depends on how well Giannis plays. Right. If he continues, I mean, I know KD came out and said that he could be the best player ever at his position. Which KD um, should worry about him being the best player. <laughs> I don't understand that For shit. sure. So, you well, got... and So, I have the Raptors five and you okay. have them four. I just don't love their backcourt. Now, rumor is that DeRozan has been working on his three-point shooting. If he comes out this year and is actually shooting threes and hitting them, mm -hmm. they may be better. But he's just like this mid-range, I want to be Kobe specialist. And I I just don't like Kyle Lowry a whole lot. I know a lot of people do. So just off that, I mean, I put him at five. It's not like there was a huge drop-off or whatever there. Yeah. Um, but that that's kind of my, my thinking there. And they've never you. had a – their bigs just never step up. I mean, I know they have a Baca, and we love a Baca and all, mm -hmm. but to me, they just have a history of not meeting their full potential. So For sure. we'll see. So who do you have as your number six? I have the Miami Heat. Okay, I I have them at seven. Okay, who do you have six? Six, I have the Charlotte Hornets. I have the Hornets at seven. Um, I, I do hope that uh, Dwight Howard will bounce back, and to me, that is what I, I'm banking on for the Hornets. And I know... I mean, you can't count on him. Really. Even if he does, I just I think the way the Heat ended the season last year, they did. They had thirty and, wins in the last forty-seven like, games. Dion Waiters is just this irrational confidence dude that I want to like. So that I mean, that's why I want the Heat. And I mean, they're they have one of the better coaches in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys won rings. Uh, I want to. I, and the Hornets I put in there was like I don't even know if they'll be that good, but it's the East, and someone has to be in the playoffs. Yeah. 
I hear you. So rounding out my number eight, I had to add them in there, which was the Detroit Pistons. I think you're dreaming on that For one. For sure. Uh, I am definitely dreaming. But you know what? In the eighth seed in the East, I feel like I mean, anybody like, could take that. I love Stan Van. I really do. Mm-hmm. And they got Avery Bradley. Yes, they did. And they've still got Andre Drummond and Reggie Jackson. See, I don't like Reggie Jackson. Maybe it's because his, like... Him leaving Oklahoma City. <laughs> well, no. I mean, it was just the way he did it. And he seems to just talk a lot of shit and be kind of cancerous to any organization I, he's on. I can see that. Um so maybe they will be that good, but I don't want to choose them because I don't like Reggie Jackson. For sure. I mean, and to me, I, I'm and putting Andre more Andre Drummond faith in, still can't hit a free throw. No, he can't. I mean, maybe he should go underhand. Um, but, I mean, I would still take – I'm still taking the Pistons at number eight. All right. And my number eight, and it, this one is also a wild shot, but, again, you have to choose eight teams in the East. I went 76ers. Really? I think if Joel Embiid can play, they mm-hmm. they will easily make the playoffs. Yeah. Now we'll just see how that works out. I also really like Dario. Yep, and then Ben Simmons will get his. Yeah, I think it's bullshit, Ben. Um, we'll get to this. I'm going to talk about Rookie of the Year and all the other stuff. I think it's bullshit that you can be a second-year player and get considered for Rookie of the Year. Agreed. They need to change that rule to where, no, it's your first year in the league. If you got out, then guess what? You just don't qualify for that award anymore. But I think they have enough pieces um, that they could make the eighth seed. Yeah. They got J.J. Redick at the two guard. Mm-hmm. He's like their veteran leader. Uh I think they have potential to make that, but we'll see what happens. I hear you. So um, just to recap the East, uh, I've got Cavs at one, Celtics at two, Wizards at three, Raptors at four, Bucks at five, Hornets at six, Heat at seven, and the Pistons at eight. I have Celtics, Cavs, Wizards, Bucks, Raptors, Heat, Hornets, 76ers. All right. All right. So go over the three. I think there's actually four, but I only wrote down three of the season awards. So – for rookie of the year, and I, I have a few options on all, all these awards. I accept defense player of the year. I only went with one. Uh, but rookie of the year, I, my favorite rookie out of this class, if I had to pick right now, is De'Aaron Fox. I do not think he's going to win rookie of the year. I just want to say he's my favorite. For sure. Um, I thought he's fast. He torches Lonzo in any game. Lonzo is scared to play him. Sits out every game so far that they have played since he dropped 39 on him in the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. It's just they have George Hill, and I think George Hill is going to start or get a lot of playing time. So that's the only reason I'm not choosing De'Aaron Fox as my Rookie of the Year option. Uh, some of my other options I have is I really think Dennis Smith Jr. for the Mavs okay. is going to be really good. Bershey was a still, I think it was the ninth pick, maybe 10th. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mavs aren't, just aren't good. They're not that great. They don't have a lot of people, and he's going to be a good point guard for them. Yeah. So I think for rookie of the year, you don't go off which is going to have the best team. You go off which rookie can have the most impact because that team kind of sucks. For sure. So that's why I go Dennis Smith Jr. My other options, uh, Donovan Mitchell for the Utah Jazz. He mm-hmm. went crazy in summer league. Uh, a lot of people, he's kind of a lot of people's dark horse candidate for rookie of the year. So we'll see what happens there. And then I also really like Malik Monk of the Hornets. I was, okay, I was going to ask you about Malik Monk. Because he's all he's pissed he got passed over. Yep. And he fell down the draft. And he is a pure scorer. At least For sure. like that's what he's in the mold of. So we'll see what happens with him. But I want to say like they didn't really have a two guard for the Hornets before they got him. Mm-hmm. So I think let Marco Bellinelli, who's left. So yep. I think he could just step in, be a piece. He hits open shots, can score. I think he I think he can get the stats to win rookie of the year. For sure. So my rookie of the year, I'm doing this purely because I want to see what happens. Lonzo Ball. I want to see Big Baller Brand go bananas. See, and I'm weird because I like LeVar. I just don't really like Lonzo. Most people are the other way around. Really? They like Lonzo I, and they don't I, like LeVar. I am LeVar. the other way around. Um, I think LeVar is entertaining as fuck. I think For sure. he really did wish things into existence. The fact that mm-hmm. the number one pick when it was the Celtics or when it was the 76ers, it didn't even look at Lonzo. Yeah. Even though he has the highest ceiling, I will say, uh, just because LeVar was talking shit that he wanted to be at the Lakers. For sure. Uh, my thing is, I think Lonzo's shooting mechanics is going to be a problem. A lot of people are just like... With his crazy... Whatever. Hip, weird shot. Motherfuckers are going to block the fuck out of a three-point shot of his. Because sure. it takes so long. Like, a quick release, just like a quarterback in football, mm-hmm. is super important in the NBA. Yeah. Like, Klay Thompson has the best shot ever, what people say mechanically, because he gets it off in, like, a 
half a second. Like, he's so fast. Lonzo, you can see it coming from a mile away. Now, he could prove me completely wrong, and he's going to get a bunch of assists if his teammates can hit shots. I don't know if you've looked. The Lakers aren't that good. No. Um, <laughs> I mean, I understand how all of the upside he has. I just don't know if his rookie year he's going to be this phenom. For that's sure, change I mean the league. it's definitely hopeful, but I just want to see what would happen if he wins it because I, I oh, think yeah. he well, would go nuts. Well, Lavar would come out with a new shoe that would take eight for months sure. To come out. And then the other two that I had there was Markel Fultz, um, and then Malik uh, Monk was my third. Well, um, Markel Fultz, I don't know if you've seen, he's trying to change his shooting form and free yes. throws. He looks like Shaq, yeah, which is like the one guy you don't want to emulate when shooting free throws. At all. And apparently it's because his shoulders really hurt. So that's why I'm like, ooh. Oh, really? See, I didn't. Uh, that's my only reason against him. And he's going to have Ben Simmons. He's going to be competing for rookie of the he year. Is. Uh, maybe it works out. Um, I just still don't think Ben Simmons should be allowed to be for rookie of the year. I, I agree. I, I'm not a fan of that. All right. So next we have defensive player of the year. I only wrote one name down. I know there's a few. Like Kawhi is always going to be in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Draymond Green will always be in the conversation, but I think it is the year that Rudy Gobert finally wins. Really? Yes. He's a SWAT machine, and if NBA 2K video games are anything to go by, that motherfucker will SWAT anything you come to the paint with. So the Jazz aren't going to have anything else. So I just think maybe Rudy Gobert just goes crazy on defense. That, that's my preseason prediction, even though I know there are you know other, even probably more likely options. Rudy Gobert's my pick. For sure. And, I mean, this may be a cop-out, but I, I went with Kawhi Leonard. Well, I mean, I just think whenever you go off of the straight argument Kawhi versus Draymond, Draymond can guard every position. Kawhi doesn't normally guard bigs. Not saying he can't. But he just doesn't. He just doesn't. Whereas Draymond can Where, guard one through five. I, I think I Gobert you. can say on that whole, like, no, I'm a throwback. I just block anything that comes in the lane. So I guess that's why I liked Gobert in that. I understand. That makes sense. All right, so the MVP. Um, I have four names here. We'll see what happens. Um, for the, me, the way I'm kind of thinking about it is it has to be someone who's not on a super team, so I don't have Steph or KD, because I just think if I'm a voter, and I don't really know how voters think, I'm, I'm not voting for either one of those dudes because you're like, yeah, they have one of the two other top three players in the league on their team. It must I get be it. easy. So Kawhi... Uh, I just think he's the only thing the Spurs have. He is going to be the defensive and offensive pillar for the team, so he's going to have a you know good legs to stand on for sure. Uh, someone else, and I actually didn't write him down, but I was thinking of it. I thought this year was going to be the year of James Harden finally getting it, but then they traded for Chris Paul, <laughs> and that changed your whole. Dynamic. And I think that a lot of people be like, "Well, it must be easy playing with Chris Paul." Same reason I don't think Westbrook will get in the running again because of like, "Well, you got Paul George." Agreed. Um, but that too, before all that, this offseason happened, I was like, he has to get it finally, right? For He's sure. been number two so many times. Um, but Giannis is my dark that, horse, right? That's who I have as my MVP. Is and Giannis again, because that's to Kimpo. I'm, I butcher that name every time. Onto Kimpunto, something. Um, I just call him Giannis. Yep. Uh, so I think Giannis could be because, again, he's really all they – kind of Kawhi. Mm -hmm. he, at least he's the biggest name they have. And I know I mentioned earlier they have other good players, and they do, but no one's like Jabari's a superstar or Chris Milton's a superstar. For sure. So I think if he can elevate them to a top three or four playoff seed – Then he deserves then, it. Then he could be in that conversation at the very least. And I took that route as well of not picking off of a – this once in a generation that happened to do once every other year super team, right. um, which is why I went with Giannis. I mean, with his ability that he can play, he can get up and drive to the basket or he can pull up and shoot. And then his defending skills with his ridiculous uh, arm length, I, I don't see how you can go against him, but I also can see Kawhi. Um, I, agree to, I agree with James Harden. Right. Um, I think he could have been in the running, but I think adding Chris Paul almost diminishes that. Right. And okay, my last two kind of go against what I said earlier. I think this could be the year LeBron wants to win it again. And so LeBron's just like, no, I'm leading my team in points, rebounds, and assists like he did in the playoffs, yeah. right? We'll see. I don't think the Cavs, again, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't think they're going to be great. But who else is going to get the assists for that team besides LeBron? So I for think sure. if he can get his assist numbers up and then he's going to get rebounds and points just because his size and you know mm -hmm. where he plays. Um, so I think LeBron has a more of a chance this year than he has in previous years. And the other one is Kyrie because 
Because he's he the feel only like alpha. Prove something? Well, and he's like the only alpha on the Celtics. Mm -hmm. Like Gordon Hayward's good, Al Horford's good, but they're not like dominant personalities, at least not on the court. So I could see Kyrie just if the Celtics have the number one seed in the East, I just think Kyrie has a good argument. I hear you. That's kind of where I'm coming from on that one. So our next topics um, are a little less off the sports and lists and all that stuff. Um, so one thing me and you have in common, because I think we have a lot of things in common. A lot of things are very different. We do. We're good friends, I think, because of some of those things. Um, both of us were born with different last names than we currently have. That is true. Which is rare for men. For sure. Yeah, right, because women get married or whatever and normally take names. Um so when I was born, my name was Aaron Harrington. Now it is Aaron Mosier. And that was because when I was six years old, I was adopted by my dad. Mm -hmm. And then you were also adopted. Yeah, I was born as Daniel Gerard. And then I was adopted by my stepfather, Brian, um, and took on the last name of Wall. Right. And I think just those two statements we just made will kind of show how the topic should be like how we took way different paths. Like those things are the same. We were adopted and got our last name sure. changed. I refer to him as my dad, mm -hmm. and you refer to him as your stepfather, Brian. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, and it's, I, I mean, I will have given to him for six to eight years. He was in my life. He was great. He was my baseball coach. Uh, every day that I got home, he would, you know, play baseball with me outside, whatever I'd want to do. Um, but, I mean, there's a huge difference with that. I mean, he kind of left. Um, he chose drugs over over us. Right. Um, so that, that took think a different... Your, your mom's situation, I think, I'm sure, played into it a little bit. For sure. Um, I, their whole situation of, of choosing a, a bad path to go down um, and end up actually taking themselves to jail for a while, uh, I think made it a huge thing. To me, um, I don't associate with him. I, I don't even hardly talk to him. Um, I think the last time I spoke to him was when my nephew, who just turned five, was born. Um, and that's because I happened to run into him uh, I remember that, actually, at the yeah. hospital. Um, but that's the only time I don't refer to him at all as my dad. Um, to me, my my father figure most of my life is my grandfather. Right. Um, even though I was, I technically, I guess you could say I have two dads. To me, neither one of those are as close as a father figure as my grandfather. Well, I think it's another difference is you do know your biological father. For sure. Like, when did he come back in your life? Or was he kind of always in your life? Because I never fully understood yeah, all that. Yeah, so he was not in my life until I was 12. He was there for the first year or so. Um, he, he is a veteran. Um, he was shipped for, I think he was gone for three-plus years. Panama. In Panama. Um, we have no idea um, what goes on down there or with a lot of other places the military sends people. Um, but uh, he didn't come back around until I was 12, and that was... Um, really my grandmother and my mom finally saying, okay, you can start to hang out with them. And we've had a rocky relationship. Uh, we've, we've been up and down. Um, but I mean, he's tried to be there, uh, but he hasn't been there as, like I said, as much or as near as my grandfather has. He was the one who has been there my entire life. Uh, whereas my biological father has just kind of been in and out. Right. Yeah. And so mine, I don't, I don't really know my biological father. I met him once when I was four, mm -hmm. and I stayed the night with him one night, and he told me these stories of how the Sandman was going to come and kidnap me if I didn't go to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. So that was that's really, like, the best story to explain that. Um, my mom started dating my dad, who a lot of people would say is my stepdad, but, I mean, he's just my dad, uh, when I was nine weeks or nine months old. I don't really remember. So I was born premature. I was in a hospital in an incubator for a while, um, came back. My mom knew his sisters and they kind of set them up or whatever. Um, the first word I learned was dad called him dad, even though it's my mom's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's really like, that's just my dad. Yeah. Like, I don't think of it any, any differently. A lot of people are like, y'all look so much alike. And it's super funny because we're <laughs> <Yes>. not, <laughs> not blood related or anything. Um, but like his whole family, they're my cousins, aunts, uncles. I mean, mm -hmm. Half of them treat me like I'm adopted, and the other half treat me like I'm family, you know, and that just kind of comes with the territory, I guess. Yeah. Uh, my parents broke up when I was like three, and then my dad still picked me up and took me to like McDonald's and Burger King because 
you understand because me and you both grew up pretty poor. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. <laughs> right. And so he would take me, we had to go 30 minutes to the nearest McDonald's in the whole, you know, in town. And he would take me there. And I remember once we were at Burger King and I was, just, I just out of nowhere at like three and a half, four years old, just started lying of mom's always asking about you. She always wants you to invite him or invite her. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yep. And then when I'd see my mom, I'd be like, well, he wants to invite you, but he's, he, he doesn't know if he should. <laughs> I don't know how I'm that aware that young, but yeah. somehow I did that. And then it got them to talk again. They started dating again. And then when I was five, they got married. My favorite story about that is, I'm sure it was the same for you growing up, uh, the day before school or the week before your teacher calls you and tells you which class you're in, right? Yep. And so my kindergarten teacher calls and they want to speak to me mm-hmm. to tell me I'm in Miss Williams kindergarten class. And I was like, she asked me like, how's life? How am I doing something to that extent? And I was like, oh, I just went to my parents' funeral because I got funeral and wedding confused at this age. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God. And I was like, I know it's so exciting. I'm like so happy about it. Teachers probably just doesn't know what to do at all. And she called back and then talked to my mom and was like, no, he meant wedding. And all that. <laughs> it's like, I'm not dead by the way. Right. Um, so yeah, my dad, when I was six, I got adopted. So in kindergarten, my last name was so Harrington. By mm-hmm. first grade, I was adopted and my name was changed. Uh, I remember having to go to court about that. Yeah. And then my biological father was sitting in the room um, in you know county prison outfit because he hadn't paid child support since I'd been born. And they just, like, I mean, I guess that was also the clear thing. They asked him, do you care more or less? He gets adopted. And he was like, I don't care. So I was like, I'll oh, fuck him right? exactly. from that day forward. Uh, and then my dad was my dad. Now, my dad gets real prickly about me mentioning biological father or the fact that there's these other people I might be related to. So I just can't bring it up to him, which is kind of annoying. Um, it's like we all know. I don't yeah. see what the big deal is. Uh, but so that's been my dad like forever. So, you know, first takes me fishing, does whatever. It's be my dad forever for sure there's no going back on that one i guess for me uh my biological father has tried to hit me up on facebook in the last five or six years but every time it's like so and so in the family died and we want to know if you'll be a pallbearer at the funeral and you can meet the family (laughs) that's a great place to meet everyone at a funeral right well really i want to meet him yeah and i want to meet i have two half sisters because i'm an only child so that would be cool right to Mm -hmm. meet half sisters not meet a huge family at a funeral. Yeah. Like that just nobody at except for him. So I'm always like, I'm sorry. No. And it's always me drive four hours to him. Never him. Let me come down here or meet halfway or anything like that. So, I mean, maybe it's unfair to say he just doesn't seem like a real cool guy. Right. Or whatever. So I just don't really care. Now growing up, I knew he cheated on my mom. That's why they broke up. So my mom was pregnant, caught Mm -hmm. him with another girl. And in hindsight, I'm like, well, he was 18. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't really even hold that against him. It's just the fact he... He chose... Right, he just doesn't even seem to care. I understand. And then I have a dad who does. Yeah. And he's been awesome my whole life. I mean, he's never even spanked me, which some people say is bad. But, like, my dad's just super nice. For sure. Genuine guy. One of the most genuinely country nice people you'll ever meet. Right. And I mean, I'm way different than him in a lot of ways, but he's also <laughs> taught me a lot of good stuff. For um, sure. So part of it is just like, well, I don't want to let him down in any way, so I just won't meet this guy. I hear you. Or whatever. But again, would like to meet half-sisters just because, and I would kind of like to meet them to be like, hey, what's some diseases you have? Like, I know my grandma has Parkinson's, and now I'm like, I'm getting Parkinson's, right? Yeah. Uh, I would be curious to know what what's going on on that side of the family, if anything I need to worry about. But probably won't ever meet him you know i'm almost 30 getting close to it so i'm like i haven't met him yet i don't see it happening anytime soon but for sure all right so going over the final topic today um is the expectations and reality of having kids yeah and i don't have kids i have a dog which and can that, be like a kid. And I that's think calling fur thing. babies is what most people call them now. Yeah, um, me and my wife are real happy. With, I mean, honestly, the day I lost my job, I was like, I'm never having kids because this is the worst thing ever. I can't even imagine having a child depending on me. Um, we'll see how life goes. It might get better and we're something we'll revisit. But like, what did you think it would be like to have a kid compared to what it's actually like with two kids? So first... And I don't know, maybe maybe everyone has this thought, or maybe it was just me, that I could train my child very young, and I would be able to 
do the things that I would want done when I was a younger child to be able to learn faster. Um, for instance, just simple things of yes and no, being able to understand, um, but then not realizing that if they were to do something wrong, you want to get on to them, but when they're younger and they give you that really cute, sad face, it's it's kind of hard to. Right. Um, well, and I think, and I told you something like last week when we were just hanging out, I think part of it's because you were raised by your grandparents and your grandparents sure. are a little more lenient yeah. than, than your parents are. Um, so I think just you, the example you saw, mm -hmm. right? So you're like, ah, all right. It, exactly. And to me, I mean, I have luckily been spoiled. I have an amazing wife that stays home and takes care of our two boys. Um, but one thing that I, I was not ready for was when they just have a fit and there's nothing you can do, you almost feel helpless as kids just screaming their head off um, for whatever reason because they don't want you to hold them or you're not standing up, you're sitting down. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is – Right, just, and as someone without a kid, I'm like, I would just to <laughs> deal with it. Exactly, and it's like that's that's what was my thought process originally was, you know, I'll just let them deal with it. But when you have a kid screaming, you just – especially when it's your kid, you get this terrible pit – or you know, feeling in the pit of your stomach right. um, about it. But I think that one of the more rewarding things, like for instance, this weekend, my wife has spent the last week at my grandparents and uh, they planned on driving them down yesterday. Um, however, I got off a little early on Friday, so I decided to drive up there and surprise them. When I got to see my boys, my, my one son, Cy, my oldest, was in the bathtub. He stood up. He was so happy. Um, he had a little mustache with soap that he wanted to show. Right. Um, but as soon as he got out of the bathtub, ran up to me, gave me the biggest hug, and just that feeling that you get uh, when you see your kid after you've missed them for just a small week. Couldn't imagine people get deployed or anything like that that's gone right. for months. And just seeing them and knowing that you would do anything for them. And I think that's my biggest thing is not realizing – with also realizing that putting my kids first for anything, uh, no matter what it is, whether it's serving food um, out, making sure that they have all the right amount of food that we need, making sure that I don't go and buy an extra video game now because I know I'm going to need to eventually get my son some more clothes here in six months or whatever. Um, I just think that it made me think a little bit more ahead and not what's happening now and right. what money can I use now and how can I save it forward with them. To me, that that's one of the biggest things that I never thought about. Um, which maybe I should have, but I mean, we had wanted to make sure we start putting back for him, but whenever you're raising the kid, obviously diapers and all that stuff's expensive. That's another thing I didn't realize how ridiculously expensive diapers are. Yeah. I mean, you're talking $40 a box for a hundred and twenty shit in. <laughs> exactly. And they last like 10 days and you got to go buy a new one. Um, luckily my wife is on our second child. She actually moved to cloth diapers. Um, which has been fantastic because that saves lots of money, which I love to keep. Um, but to me, I, I really think it's that feeling that you get um, with your kids, whether it be bad or good, um, that you didn't know was there, I guess, before having kids. Right. And I think your kids aren't quite old enough yet. But the thing I like would look forward to in my expectations, well, another thing first, I always thought I'd want a son, but the older I get, I'm like – dudes are kind of douchebags i'd almost rather have a daughter because then you don't have to worry about well they always talk sons you gotta worry about getting other people pregnant daughters getting them pregnant right so yeah. that's like the big difference um but just lately for whatever reason i'm like i want a cool video game playing daughter for, <laughs> for sure um but the, the, like showing video games to like kids or like my favorite cartoons or movies like i'm gonna show digimon we're watching every episode yeah. of digimon together and i know size not quite old enough um I mean, you could give him some video games and he'd play them, but he wouldn't get it necessarily. Yet, yeah, I right? mean, like he's been playing Super Mario Brothers and just loves it. Right. Um, and I guess I also think that one having those steps with your kid, and that's what you look forward to. You could be the worst person in the world, but you could always be able to say that I raised this child that's now a great person. Right. Um, and I think that's always one last thing that people can – can think of and it is something that I do pride myself on is that I hope my my wife and I can raise two great kids that become 
men that want to not only help themselves but raise a family and and contribute to this world. Not well, I will say I think you need to be probably a little more strict for sure, or else they're going to be entitled. Yeah, they may be bag sons, right? For sure. I mean, we I know mean, guys like that. Yeah, that and that's for sure. And I mean, that weighing that healthy balance, and especially uh, at, at an age. Um, when to get a little more strict and, you know, when should you start spanking and, and also the look that people give when my wife breastfeeds out in public really is a kind of annoying. Well, it's um, a heathen activity for sure, because know. we shouldn't, you know, feed that child, but you spank your kid and child in public. Fine. But if you feed, feed your them. child, mm-hmm. no, no and, I don't know. And it, I mean, my wife was very self-conscious with our first boy with Sia, but with Paul, she don't care where we're at. If he's hungry, and he she's gonna feed him. If anyone's got a problem with you can it, tell he's chubbier. <laughs> he is. He is massive. Yeah, he's got a little double chin going on. Yeah, if not, almost going on a triple. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, about the end of the episode, something we're gonna try to do, and we can at least do for the next four weeks. So we'll see if uh, it can happen. If anyone out there makes beats or music of any kind that they want us to play, you can definitely send it to us at the powwow with mo at gmail dot com. Uh, I have a friend named Mike Ford who's getting into making beats. Uh, he has sent me four beats, so the next four weeks we're going to be playing his stuff. Um, if you need his contact information, I'll try to try to get that for y'all. Um, you can definitely just send us an email, and I can relay the information to him. Let me pull this up from him real quick to get his actual producer name here. I know it's Sin City. It's just pronounced in its own Yeah, and while you're pulling way. that up, uh, don't forget we are now on iTunes. Google Play, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn, and then obviously SoundCloud. Right, and we have a, a couple others waiting on approval for. Uh, again, if you could write a review and rate us on iTunes, that would be the most helpful thing at the moment for us. Um, and just let people know, if you know anyone who listens to podcasts and they they want another one to listen to, I know me personally, I listen to about 20 a week or different shows that I subscribe to. Um, so if anyone you know that needs something to listen to, uh, please let them know about us. All right, so this beat is by Sin City Beats. That is spelled C-Y-N-S-I-T-Y. And this one's called the Get It On V2. Um, if you like this or you're just curious and getting beats from him, like I said, contact us and we'll uh, get you on touch. Peace. Peace out.